Hello everyone and welcome to another Mate Nason video. In this video I'm going to be looking at 10 games that I think every board game collection should have. Or more importantly, these perhaps should be some of the first 10 games you consider adding to your collection when you're first starting out into the hobby. For this list I tried to look at different board game mechanics and I tried to pick games that I feel introduce these mechanics the best while also giving you a good range of games to have in your collection to start introducing to your friends and family. If you're already an avid board game collector, you've probably already played these games, you probably already own these games. So I don't really know why you're watching this video unless you're trying to make sure you have the kind of board game collection cred that you think you have. But if you're a newer player, you're in the right place. So let's start talking about some of the games I would recommend you add to your collection first. Coming in at number 10 is a game I feel that you should probably consider adding to your collection at the beginning, in the early stages. Uh, this game fulfills what I would call the family need, meaning that this game is a, is a good example of a modern hobby board game that can be played by friends and family of all skill levels while still providing a very fun, entertaining experience, and that is Ticket to Ride. Uh, Ticket to Ride came out in 2004, 2005 with an American edition and then the European edition. The differences mainly being the map, while the European edition has some extra uh, mechanics and things in the game to make it a little bit more strategically interesting. What Ticket to Ride does is it's a, it's a good game at all player counts. It's good for older gamers, younger gamers, children, um, family members of all ages, people who have played board games before, will love this game and newer people will love this game as well. There is not a lot of conflict in this game, however there is as you're trying to build your own rail networks across the map. So as a secondary game I might recommend Carcassonne. Carcassonne is a good family game that has a little bit less conflict, a little bit more chill as I would call it. But either one of these games is going to be an excellent family weight game to get you into the hobby. My number 10 Ticket to Ride. Moving on to my number nine, or one of the second types of games I think you should consider adding to your collection, would be a party game. Uh, party games are very important. You're throwing a dinner party, you're having friends over for a barbecue, uh, or you just have a bunch of people over. Maybe you got done watching a movie, or you came back from uh, a bar or a restaurant, and you're looking for something for a group of people to do. Party games are where it's at in that situation. In this spot for number nine, I recommend Code Names. Code Names is an amazing party game that can play anywhere from two to ten people or even more. Uh, you basically break in to two teams and you work together for one team to try to give word clues to um, pick these different words that are set up on the board. So it's a word association game. So it's not too complicated for people to pick up. Um, it's a good lighthearted game and that team aspect makes it work at lots of player counts or even if players aren't so comfortable with the game it can work well because you can work together as a team. As a secondary option I might recommend getting a social deduction party game and in that case I would recommend Deception Murder in Hong Kong. This game is going to have a little bit more strategy to it um, as you are trying to figure out whom the traitor amongst you is. There's one player giving clues, trying to give the other players an idea of who among them is the murderer, and it has a very good back and forth uh, mechanic where players will start accusing each other to try to figure out who the murderer is. Uh, so one of those two games is going to fulfill a party need for you. I would recommend starting out with code names, although Murder in Hong Kong is a great game. Going on to my number eight, um, I would recommend that most board game collections, actually all board game collections, should have a dexterity game. A game where you are flicking tiles, building stacks of tiles. These games are fun, lots of laughs are had. It's got a ability for people to show off skills that they get to it. Uh, everybody has a good time around the table when something crashes down or if someone makes a shot. Uh, all those emotions can run high in these games. I would recommend getting Men at Work. 
Uh, Men at Work is a very fun game where people go around the table drawing cards and these cards challenge you to add different pieces to this large structure you are building. Um, as you are making mistakes and having the structure crash down, you get infractions. So you're not out of the game, but you get a warning. And after so many warnings, you're then pushed out of the game until only one player is remaining and they are the winner. Um, if you're looking for more of a competitive game uh, where there's more interaction directly between players, I would recommend Ice Cool. Ice Cool is a flicking game uh, where players take turns as penguins trying to ditch class and one player will play as the hall monitor penguin trying to flick their penguin across the board to knock each other out. Um, a little bit more competition in this game, but still fun. Highly recommend Dexterity Game, uh, and I would go with Men at Work for your collection. My number eight. Going on to number seven, um, I think every collection or people starting out in the hobby should get what's typically called a Take That Game. Take That Games are games where there's a little bit more conflict between players and where you can interact directly hurting the other player or hampering their strategic goal in some ways. Uh, one of the first games I would recommend you consider adding to your collection is King of Tokyo. Uh, King of Tokyo has a very simple dice mechanism where you're basically rolling dice to try to deal damage to the other players. Um, however, there are strategies in this game where you can roll the dice trying to get victory points. So you can either win by beating up and knocking out the other players or by trying to collect sets of numbers to hit a uh, 20 victory points. And whoever can do that first will win the game. Um, if you are looking for a take that type of game that's maybe a little bit more strategic, a little longer, but maybe a different type of payoff at the end, I would recommend getting Survive Escape from Atlantis. Uh, this is a game where an island is sinking and you're basically trying to get your little meeples uh, from the sinking island to the continent. Uh, but there's a take that mechanic here where every turn you're rolling these monster dice and you can knock people's uh, meeples off the boat. You are choosing tiles to sink the island and so you can take a tile from under someone and their meeple will fall into the water. Um, you play these tiles to hurt other meeples and stuff. But there's a little bit more strategy in how you're trying to move your meeples off this island. Either one of these games would make a great addition to your collection for a take that mechanic. Uh, I would consider maybe starting with King of Tokyo. Going on to number six, I think every board game collection should add a co-op game. Co-op games uh, have all the players around the table working together towards some common uh, objective, a common goal. And a co-op game I would recommend getting is Forbidden Desert. Forbidden Desert is a game where you are, uh, your airship has crashed in the desert and the the propeller and the engine and everything has flown off and it's buried under sand. And so you work together to kind of explore this desert uh, in order to find the pieces that you need. Um, and after you find those pieces, you have to bring them all back together in order to build your airship and get out. So there's a lot of cooperation to do this. Uh, the same designer of Forbidden Desert has made some of the more popular co-op games as well, uh, considering Pandemic. That'd be another game I might recommend. Uh, but for me, if you're looking for a, a co-op game that maybe has more story or more of a mystery or a puzzle to solve, I would consider getting Chronicles of Crime. Uh, Chronos, Chronicles of Crime is a game uh, where you use your cell phone as an app-based game and you scan these different cards in order to uh, uncover this story and this mystery of who the murderer is or what happened. But you're all working together to do these things. Uh, so looking for a co-op game, I would recommend Forbidden Desert or Pandemic. Or if you're looking for more of a mystery game, I would consider getting uh, Chronicles of Crime. Next up on the list at number five, we have a pick up and deliver game. Every collection needs to have a pick up and deliver game where you are taking goods from one side of the map to another to fulfill uh, contracts or objectives. And I recommend getting Via Nebula. Uh, Via Nebula is a very cute game where you are trying to build these little monuments and structures. It's even got a little bit of exploration to it. Um, on your turn, basically you're going to be uncovering these different paths on this map, finding different goods like bricks and stones, um, and then you will be carrying those goods back to a location where you're trying to build this structure. Uh, you'll draft these cards that tell you you might need two stone, uh, one brick, and a pig. 
and that'll let you build your monument and then you'll get those victory points. And after players have completed so many monuments, the game's over and whoever built the most monuments with the most points wins. Very simple game, but a lot of fun. Um, and that is V and Nebula. If you're looking for a game that maybe has a little bit more combat or competition between each other, besides just getting the goods and resources, I'd consider getting Black Fleet. Um, Black Fleet is a uh, Caribbean piratey merchant themed game where you're sailing your little ship around delivering goods from one port to another. However, every player also gets to control a pirate ship and you can steal those goods from other players' ships and then uh, bury them and get treasure points for doing so. So a little bit more combat or competition in that game, but still a pick up and deliver game that's a lot of fun. So I'd recommend looking into Via Nebula or Black Fleet. Going on to my number four game, we get to the worker placement genre. Uh, worker placement is a very common mechanism in board games where you have a certain number of workers that represent your actions that you can take, and you place those workers on a central board in order to take those actions. Maybe those actions get you goods, maybe those actions let you convert goods, or start a combat, things like that. One of the first games I would recommend considering to add to your collection is Champions of Midgard. Uh, Champions of Midgard is a Vikings themed game where you're sending your workers out in order to gain uh, weapons and supplies in order to send your Vikings across the ocean to fight different monsters to get you victory points. Uh, not only does this game have a very solid worker placement mechanic, but there's fun combat in this game where you're not fighting each other, but you're fighting these monsters. So after every round of gathering your resources, you get a round of rolling combat dice to try to fight these monsters with your Vikings in order to gain their glory points. An excellent game. Um, if you're looking for a game that doesn't have that kind of combat or dice rolling, uh, but you still want to play the worker placement genre, I would consider getting Viticulture. Um, Viticulture is a, is a very sweet game of growing wine um, in your own vineyard. Uh, so you're sending your workers out there in order to get fields ready, uh, get certain grapes ready, uh, bottle and harvest the wine and things like that. Um, an excellent worker placement genre that takes off that combat if you're not interested in that. But otherwise, I would strongly recommend taking a look at Champions of Midgard. Moving on to number three, um, I feel every collection needs to have some sort of a card game or a deck building game. Uh, deck building genre is a is a genre where board is a genre of board games where you are purchasing cards in order to upgrade the standard deck you have. This deck represents actions you can take in the board game, um, and playing those cards let you do those things. But throughout the game, you get to purchase new cards to unlock and gain better actions. The deck building game I would suggest adding to your collection first is Dominion. Um, Dominion is the first deck building game actually that came out and kind of invented this genre, but it's still one of the best in my opinions for new gamers and old gamers alike. Um, basically in this game you are purchasing cards to get you better actions, to get you more money, so then you can buy victory points. And the game ends once someone has bought the victory points that are available. If you are looking for a deck building game that maybe has a little bit more theme to it and a little bit more strategic actions going on on maybe a central board, I'd consider getting Clank. Clank is a, is a deck building game where you use these cards to actually move your little worker or person around this board to get treasure from this dungeon. Um, so you are purchasing better cards that maybe help you move faster or pick up more treasure or fight monsters in this dungeon that's protecting the treasure. Um, so Clank adds a lot more strategic elements into the game, but it's still a solid deck building game. I would consider getting one of these two to add to your collection. I'd recommend getting Dominion first. Moving on to my number two game, I would recommend adding to your collection. Um, every collection needs a Euro game or an economic game. Games where you are simulating an economy of maybe buying and selling goods, running some sort of an industry. These games tend to be a little bit more crunchy, more math heavy. Um, if you are a person or maybe a family who likes that, maybe you'd consider getting this game a little bit sooner. Um, but do consider adding it to your collection. The game I'd recommend for you is Power Grid. Um, Power Grid is a game where you are trying to build different power factories. Uh, and each power factory is, is operated by some sort of material. Maybe it's oil, gas, garbage, even solar or nuclear. 
um, and these different power plants that you purchase will generate enough electricity to power one, two, five cities, and you are then sprawling out on the map trying to get your power to all these different cities. And then each round, these cities will generate you money that you use to build more power plants and buy the fuel for them. So it's got this nice economic engine going for it. If you are looking for a game that maybe is a little bit shorter, a lot less combative between each other fighting for these resources, I would consider Century Spice Road. It's a little bit more of a racing game where you're playing these cards in order to get cubes. Uh, you play a card to get some yellow cubes, play another card to turn those yellow cubes into a gray and a brown cube, and you're converting these cubes up to make them more and more valuable until you can use them to buy victory points. Um, so you're building your own personal engine, you're building your own personal economy, and whoever can do that the fastest will win. One of these, any of these two games will make a very good economic game for you. I would recommend checking out Power Grid. Lastly, I feel every board game collection needs to have a heavier game, a game that has a lot more strategic depth to it, a lot more going on, um, and these would be uh, games that I might not bring out to newer people to the hobby, but eventually you're going to get to this level and you should start adding some of these heavier games to your collection. One of the first heavier games I would consider thinking about is Scythe. Um, the reason I recommend Scythe is it is a board game that encapsulates a lot of these different mechanics we were talking about. It's not a worker placement game, but it's an action selection game where you're choosing different actions every round to do. You are gathering resources like some of these other games I talked about. You're farming to gain these resources to build more units, um, cash them in for victory points, uh, moving towards objectives that the board says onto you. There is some conflict in it as well, combat or things like that. So there's a lot more things going on as you're trying to upgrade and manage your board as efficiently as possible to complete these objectives and win. If you're looking for, a, if, if Scythe is not your flavor or the theme doesn't seem to hit you, a different uh, heavier board game I would consider as one of your first in that genre would be Terraforming Mars. Uh, Terraforming Mars is a card-based game not as much of direct area control as Scythe is, where you're playing these cars to try to build this engine to help you terraform the planet of Mars. The board in front of you does have a little bit of area control as you're trying to put water and lakes on the planet, get greeneries and cities, and get points by building all those different things. Um, so either of those two games uh, are gonna be a little bit more heavy, a little bit more of a rules overhead to get the game down, but it'll be a richer and more rewarding experience. I'd recommend considering getting Scythe first or Terraforming Mars, whichever theme kind of hits you the best. So there you have it. There are 10 games I recommend adding to your collection first to kind of dip your toe into the water of all of these different mechanics. Uh, if you're an experienced board gamer, let me know in the comments below which games you would recommend in these genres instead, or if you like the recommendations I gave. And then if you're a newer gamer, feel free to let me uh, answer any questions you have in the comments below. And thanks for watching.